G'day guys, today's a little bit of a different video, um, not about bikes today, I have been haven't had the chance to, well I haven't really been out riding much and I haven't been goofing around my bikes much, mainly because of um, the fact that I've lost my income, so I lost my income due to the COVID thing, haven't been out to import stuff, haven't really had an income since February and I've been, you know, I haven't really done much about doing anything about sorting that out. But I'll have to one of these days because, um, you know, money uh, does help get those sort of projects done. So I haven't done anything with the CBR250RR uh, and I've just been riding my, my thousand and that's all I've kind of been doing. But what I have been doing is goofing around with my van. So this is my van. So 2003 Ford Transit. It's, um, it had been used actually by a guy, well, by a guy who was a motocross rider. And so it was all set up for the inside was actually all set up for take for transporting you know motocross bikes around diamond plate in the back of it and stuff like that um it's a nice big size had um you used to have three seats in the front two seats in the back and obviously three seats in the in the front again it's a medium top uh van um, had a lot of sponsor decals and things on it, on it when i got it and i've just slowly been tidying it up um and this this job's been going on for a few months i just you know i haven't spent every single day on it just every now and again i you know in the mind to kind of work, work on it and i work on it i guess i should talk a little bit about the history of the van so the history of the van is that um it, it as i say it was being used by a guy who was a motocross racer um, it was set up for that it drove up and down the country a fair bit it had just under 300,000 k's on the clock um and i had my little van at that time which is this other van here this other is also a transit but um and my, my transit is actually quite nice to drive but the thing is that it's a it's a it's a low roof and it's um i really wanted something i could camp in as well so when i saw this van i just had to have it because it was just perfect for what i wanted so the van had been sitting around for a long time yeah the the, the lady that had it her son had left home and um and the van just basically wasn't getting used it was getting used just randomly to pick up a bit of furniture or, or do some shopping and those kinds of things so it wasn't really getting used properly it hadn't been maintained properly for a little while um so when i got it yeah she was a little bit sad and i've just been um you know fixing those things up so i've done you know obviously all the, the normal stuff oil filter change and oil change and uh, fuel filter change and um just just basically tidied it up got the uh, new new air filter the air filter was absolutely absolutely had it um and yeah and, and and then the next thing was getting uh, these these transits are now renowned for having leaks so of course mine's got all the windows on it so mine had a few various leaks which i've had to sort out uh, behind these panels here where the windows kind of sit in here um it had minor rust spots nothing major but just enough for you know when you had a big rainstorm the water would get in there and that would be frustrating where the back door lock is here which i'll show you I've replaced this, but the but the lock here, this had a um, this basically gets worn, and on on the original one, it was really really worn, and so the door didn't shut properly, and that meant that up the top up here, yeah, you ended up with uh, water dripping in a little bit there, which was also frustrating. And then um, this window here, this was the major one. This was this one had a slightly bigger rust spot. Not you know not real bad, but again, it was the water was getting in quite badly on that side. So I fixed all of those leaks, got all that all pretty much well sealed up. Um, and then I found I had water leaking in the cab. Um, and what, what was happening is it was coming in, it was coming in down here with, in the footwell, running down here underneath the, well it's not a carpet, but running underneath this mat, which has got like a, it's got an absorbent backing on it basically, which is probably not the smartest thing. I guess they've done that for sound, but that would absorb all the water, become a massive problem so um, i had to find those leaks so that took me a little while to find those leaks actually they're a little bit troublesome to, to find i took all the flooring out took everything out um the inside and the back of this van um when i got it i haven't got pictures of it actually from when i got it but the back of the van was just basically uh, it was decked out and i had to strip the whole thing out and um what i've been doing is stripping it out and as i stripped it out i you know then i obviously didn't want to put any more lining or anything and it'll do too much with it until i found all the leaks so yeah, I just had to sort of get in there and try and find all those leaks, um, sort all the leaks out. Um, and you know, obviously if you line it up, then you can't find it. I had to strip all the original interior in there because the original interior just got so damp and so wet. Um, it used to have a leak actually up on the ceiling, and I'll show you that in a minute as well, where that was. So it had a leak up in here. 
um, and the seams across there's two lots of seams and you can see where the where the water had been running down um, but the seams basically where they joined the panels in these vans and these panel vans there's a seam here down the back down there there's another seam that runs across uh, the back and those seams they just they leak eventually you have to you have to put new seam sealer in them which is what I've done so basically behind these pillars what happens is these pillars have got like little, little lugs on them and those lugs um, go through actual holes in the skin to the inside and of course they have like an RTV silicone that's kind of squirted around them but um, you know I mean over the years that just that just disappears and basically what happens then is you end up with um, you end up with the water running down here and it runs down the inside it runs down it runs into the floor well and that's that's where all my water was coming from um, and I sealed the windscreen up as well because they're another place that these can leak so once you seal all those holes up it all comes pretty good it's pretty watertight now I don't really have any more problems uh, with water um, but it was a problem it was a problem for a few months I'd wait for it to rain each time get in there sort it out and I, obviously I, everything was out of it it was just we just had clear bare metal in here um, and where I've got to now basically is I've got to a stage where I've kind of started ordering bits and pieces and I can't really do a lot more until I get my wiring and that's what I'm waiting for at the moment. I'm just waiting for a lot of wiring. I'm, I've got solar panels to go up on the roof. I've got a fridge to put in here. I've got a kitchen to build at the front. Um, and I've been slowly, you know, sort of adding a little bit of insulation. So this 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 foam here, this is actually what they call a XPS foam, which is a, a closed loop or closed cell type of insulation. And you have to use that inside a van. You can't use, well, you, you could use ordinary insulation, but the problem is it absorbs moisture. And of course, when you have a warm interior in the van and you have a cold outside um, in a damp environment uh, or a humid environment, what happens is the, the moisture, um, you'll see it on the inside of your windows. You know, like when you have a cold day, the water runs down the inside of the windows. That's because too much moisture in the air. And that happens in vans as well, and it happens on the van skin. So you can't really use an insulation that, um, that absorbs moisture. So it's got to be a closed loop cell or an XPS. Um, type insulation um, and then it's a problem because you need to find stuff that's affordable so I've been experimenting with those with, 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 with that um, this stuff so this stuff's really thick this is probably I don't know like 25 25 mils um, thick um, and this stuff's really really good you can feel it like it's quite hot day outside today and if I put my hand on that it doesn't really feel too warm it's it's a lot it's, it, it's a huge difference temperature to the outside skin um, but even this stuff's good um, but it's obviously not as good because it's not as thick as that but the idea is that um, once I have enough of this in here um, and I've got all the basic metal um, covered where, the, where, where, where moisture would occur then what I can do is I'll, try, I'll probably just use ordinary insulation on the inside of here when I line this all up but I need my wiring in here before I can do that um, and this stuff I found at Bunnings actually very cheap I think it's $16 a roll and it's um, uh, 1.8 meters by 900 wide um, so you need a few rolls to do a van, but it, you know if you were to do the whole van in this type of insulation um, with some spray foam, it'd cost you a thousand bucks to do a van this size for sure, because that stuff's you know thirty odd dollars a panel, and trying to get it cheap is just about impossible. So far, I've 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 I've, do, I've done that. I've done this basic, I've done the basic stuff there. I've got some lights in here at the moment. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my lights. I'll I'll show you those quickly. So we got one down the back down here, another one up over here. Uh, these lights are pretty bright at, at night they light the whole van up pretty nicely um, but I've got those wired into the normal door mechanism and, and the problem with that is that the door mechanism I figured out actually needs a current and if you don't have some current running um, then what happens is um, you end up in a situation where the, the lights don't turn on when you open the door and that's the situation I'm in at the moment and to be honest this problem actually this 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 door problem this is um, a very common problem when you have lead lights is if you have any kind of circuitry that requires some sort of current draw um, and if you don't draw the current then you have a problem with um, with things not working properly but you can you can put some resistors in to solve that problem so I'll show you guys how I do that when I do it I haven't filmed anything that I should I should have filmed the whole thing actually I should have filmed all of this I was lazy I couldn't be bothered <laughs> you know and I just wanted to get stuck into it so I got stuck into it and this is kind of where it's at now but um, this is gonna be our camping van um, family camping van I had to keep the rear seats in here because I have two kids so um, and the idea is to take a, ba a bike on the back um, maybe either a motorbike or a mountain bike I'm not really sure yet um, still the jury's still out on that one um, 
yeah, and it's going to be an interesting little journey, I think, this van. I, you know, it's, it's all new for me. I've got a solar panel to go on the roof. I've got a 300-watt solar panel to go on the roof. I've got two house batteries, two 120-ampere-hour uh, batteries. So I'll have 240 ampere-hours worth of uh, battery in here. Um, I've got a DC to DC converter, which I'll show you guys. I've got a fridge, which I'm, and I'm designing a bench for that at the moment, which I'll also show you. Um, I've obviously got the bed in here, but it's very basic at the moment. I'll have to take that out before I line it. The idea of my bed in here actually is that I sometimes want to be able to still take my bikes racing. And I don't want the bed to be permanently in here. So what I've actually done with the bed is I've made everything removable. So everything's kind of doweled or bolted together and you can quickly unbolt it and take the whole thing out of here. And you could potentially roll a couple of bikes into the back of this van um, and go to Lakeside or do something like that. So. Um, I'll, I need the van like that. I need it to be multifunctional. It's not enough for me to just for it to just be a permanent camper van. Um, it's got to you know, it's got to be useful in, in other ways. So, so that's kind of my requirements. My requirements is to you know it's got to be able to take four people, two kids, two adults, um, be able to put a bike in here sometimes if I go racing, um, and be flexible for what I need. And I and the other thing I figure is that everything has to be easy. You know, I, I want good sounds in here. I want um, I want you know a few modern conveniences. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to have a toilet or a shower or anything like that in here. But I want to be able to cook, you know, um, and I want to be able to sleep comfortably without having to fold down and make a bed and muck around with bed. And I want my boy to be able to sleep in here really easily without having to make a bed for him too. So I'm going to make all those beds on rollers and things, um, and that's all on the planning stages at the moment. And what sort of things are wrong inside it? Well, you know, it's typical stuff like, you know, the vents are broken and just don't work. It's very plasticky, everything gets broken easily in these sorts of vans. Um, the other one over here is the same, it's it's broken as you can see. So you know this stuff's all got to come out, I've got to get new, got to get new bits and pieces to to sort that sort of stuff out to make it really good. Um, I've got uh, I've got a camera in here at the moment so I've got a full dash cam set up front and rear um, but I haven't run the wires for those things at the moment, I've just, just basically got them working. Uh, but that's really good, and I'm gonna I'm going to put a, a permanent um, rear dash cam in here with a bit of perspective, so I can see what's behind me when the windows are semi-blocked out, which they are some of the time. So that's kind of important. I've got a Dometic skylight, which is going to be going up in in the, in the roof here, and I'll show you on top of the roof if I can. So if we get up on the roof here, you can see the seams where the seams would be on this. Hopefully you can see it there, That's one of the seams is across there and the other one's down the back and I've had to fill those. Um, one of the hold ups on this was waiting for the roof rack system. Um, I had some of the system but I didn't have all of the racks that were the right size. Of these Rhino roof racks, the, um, the actual um, mounting system is specific to each van to some degree. Um, there's a gutter mount system but the gutter mount system has to be the right height for the roof and the old ones that I had just weren't the right height, so I had to buy new ones, which wasn't the cheapest of things to do. One of the other things that I did do with my van as well was um, put new headlights in it. So the old headlights were just so crazed and, you know, really just unrepairable. You could have polished them, but they did never come up right, and I, I had to go up polishing them. It was just a waste of time, so I just put new headlights. I've got new headlights in here, found these on eBay. They were reasonably cheap. Um, and they, they look still looking pretty good. I've had those in there for about three or four months now. Pretty happy with them. Um, the only thing that I don't like about the headlights on this van is that the bulbs themselves are pretty pathetic. Um, but I think it's an H4 bulb and I've got some lead bulbs that I'm going to pop in here that I'm going to try and uh, see if I can get a bit more brightness out of these things because they're just really hopeless. But that's, you know, that's the error of this kind of thing. They were, they were all like that. So I've got that done now and I've got the Ridge Rider um, awning on there which I think is necessary and I've also got um, a tent that attaches to that awning so that I can really make use of that. The kitchen will be in here and I'll show you that shortly, I'll show you what I'm designing. I can't think really what else there is really to show here, I've got a fair bit of storage space in the back of this thing, it's pretty good. Um, again, it's not it's not well organised at the moment. I'm going to build removable shelving in here, you know, so that I can put you know some tools and some of the other goodies like the shower box and some other stuff. Um, you know, the, obviously the oven will be in the kitchen in the front. I've got chairs in here for sitting on. I'm going to have a table in here, uh, window blockouts and things like that. But I will put curtains in here as well. But oh, not curtains. I'm going to put blinds in here. 
Um, and it's pretty cool. I've been, I've been testing it. So we've, so we've been out camping in this a couple of times and we sort of figured out that because it's winter here at the moment, um, even though it's nice and warm like now during the day, it gets, it gets, gets cold at night. So um, it got too cold and we decided we needed a heater. So we've bought a diesel heater, which I'll show you shortly. Um, and, and, and I'm going to be doing the install on that, on that soon as well. Um, and that, then we should be able to set the temperature and, um, and we could also set time delays and things on it so we could have it running, like for example if we go out on the weekend or going out on a Friday night, we could set it to come on an hour before we get in the van so the van's nice and warm when we get into it. Which sounds very wussy, which it probably is, but um, it's practical. And then I have, um, in here I have my fridge, you know, this was a big decision, so the fridge, um, and I'll show you this, time thing on it. You can see it's got two zones, this is dual zone fridge. Let's get that over a little bit. Reasonable, it's got reasonable amount of space inside this fridge. I've got a lot of stuff in here at the moment because we just had a party the other day so it's full of um, full of extra stuff that we couldn't get in our ordinary fridge. It's got the nice clips which you clip down so when you're moving around it's not flying open and at the moment because I've got stuff jammed in there it's it's done like that normally you just better open and close these easily so two two sides to this fridge um, and it, I was looking for a fridge actually second hand you know it's nice to try and do things second hand as much as you can but the problem with second hand fridges is that like they're about they're typically about six or seven hundred bucks um, for something this size this is an 80 litre um, and dual zone um, and even a, even a single fridge, you know, people were asking like 600 bucks for them and they second hand, you know. But I could get a 38 litre for 7.99 brand new for an Engel fridge, which is a really good fridge and had good reviews. But, you know, the, the, the thing with these types of fridges is that, they, you, you know, so many people say they're good and other people say they're bad. And, um, and it's hard to get a really good range of reviews because um, not everybody's using them, I guess. Um, but the one thing I did notice that was people had in common was that people who had single size, single side fridge or just a, a single zone, um, always upgrade to a dual, dual zone once they've had one. And so I thought, well, I, I, I get it. I get the thirty eight liter for seven ninety nine, um, and this was these these Austral ones were at uh, I'm trying to think of the name of um, the store uh, Anaconda down 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 local to where we are, um, <laughs> and they've just been making these fridges for a short space of time, so hard to get info on them, but. This has an LG compressor and wiring inside of it, so and it comes with a two-year guarantee, and it was seven ninety-nine for an eighty-litre fridge. So I thought, well, I, you know, getting a two-litre, two, I'm getting sorry, a two-year two-year warranty. It seemed more sensible to spend the money this way um, and go with a dual zone rather than perhaps buying a single zone and then later deciding I needed to upgrade. So, so I've got that. And then over here, I've got my batteries. So we've got a couple of batteries here, Centurion batteries, deep cycle. Uh, AGM, um, 120 amp per hour, 12 volt batteries. I'm going to hook those up in, in parallel so that I have two, so I can effectively use 128, 120 amps worth of power, um, which would be 50% of the total capacity of the batteries when they're hooked together. Um, I've got a PWA solar charge control here, but I'm not going to use this. Um, I've got an MPPT charge controller coming, which is far better. Um, far better than this and um, one of the things it can do is, is check the temperature of your batteries um, and you can set the new charge controller so that it um, doesn't try and charge your batteries when your batteries are already too hot and that's important in this climate because we're in a hot climate here so um, I think I'm going to, when I get this gear I'm going to have a good talk about some of this stuff because we're in a unique situation in Queensland you know um, or far north Queensland because um, it gets so hot and it's so hot all year round whereas um, most of the stuff that I can find on these solar setups is all to do with you know colder climates and um, uh, lithium ion batteries um, in colder climates and um, there are some advantages and some disadvantages. Okay so this is the first of the things that I've got, uh, um, well not the first of things, it's the first of many things that I've got on order or had on order and have arrived. So this is a um, 140 amp uh, ABR Signwinder DC to DC charger and battery isolator. So what this does basically is you wire this up to your main battery and to your earth and it works out when your battery, when your main battery is charged, your main starter battery is charged and then what it does is it starts to shunt the voltage from the alternator to your house batteries and your, and your setup so that you can charge your, your house batteries um, at a faster rate. Um, 
I'm trying to get some info back on this at the moment actually, so it'd be interesting to see whether these guys actually respond to me. I've asked them a whole bunch of questions around this stuff. Um, but anyway, this is this is quite a good setup. This is these these are quite cheap. These are sort of around 85 bucks. Um, sometimes a little bit more, but you know, obviously you need to add your wiring and stuff. But one of the really nifty things that you can do with this is that um, it has this little extra lug on the bottom here. And what this lug does is this lug allows you to use your house batteries to start your main, or, or to put a bit of charge into your main starter battery if you ever flatten your battery. So I've had situations where my kids have got in the front of the van and they turn the lights on and flatten the batteries and it's a real hassle, then I've had to jump the van. Well with this setup, I would no longer need to do that because I can put a switch on here between here and earth. And when I switch that switch, um, I could use the house batteries to actually start the start the start the bus, which is which is great. So this is, I think this is a must have. I think this is probably a really good thing to have. Um, but I want to get some a few questions answered around it, and we'll see whether these guys come back and whether they answer me or not. Otherwise, I'll have to make some educated guesses and do some things my own way. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's a pretty cool setup. Um, it means that you can, you know, basically bolster your, your ability to charge your batteries. So instead of just using just solar, it means that while you're moving, you could also be charging your batteries. Um, one of the questions I have around this, of course, is I don't want to be I don't want to be overcharging my batteries. So I don't want to be pumping 140 amps or 100 amps worth of voltage to my, or even 50 amps worth of voltage to my batteries if they're already fully charged, because uh, that doesn't make sense. So I want to know whether the thing shuts itself off, or whether it's smart enough, or whether I need to add something to do that. So I've got to figure all that kind of stuff out. But um, nevertheless, pretty cool piece of kit. And then the other thing that's arrived is um, this. And this is a Chinese diesel heater. So um, everybody raves about these and says these are the business. Um, that kind of shows you what it is. So that's the actual heater unit itself. I don't know what this nonsense is. Maybe that's it set up in a box. Yeah, that must be it set up in a box. Yeah, uh, I would never set it up in a box like that. That's not what I want. But um, but you could, you know, you could if you wanted to. So uh, yeah, it comes with all the kit that you need to hook this thing up. Um, ducting and more ducting and um, you know filters, everything you need to basically get this thing going. There's an exhaust, an inlet, an inlet filter, a wiring loom. Heat proof ducting, um, and then the main unit itself, which is uh, which is here. So, oh, and that's the other thing it came with too was a um, remote control, so you can control it remotely. So if you're lying in bed and you feel like you're getting a bit cold, you could you could turn it on or you could turn it off or you can pump pump it up or down, whatever you want. And the unit that you set up on the wall, which you know controlling it so you can set the you base, basically thermostat so you basically set the temperature that you want and you know 20 degrees if you want 20 degrees in your van at night you set it to 20 degrees and it'll just keep the van at 20 degrees all night um, and then the actual heater itself which is in in here and a, and a pump which is just there so I'll show you guys this stuff once I actually pull it out and actually have a really good look at it um, so this is the 3D modeling program that I'm using to kind of um, design the things for the inside of my van um, to get a rough idea of sort of how things might work, whether they're going to work well or not. I'm using Lightweight 3D. Um, I've just basically got, you know, it's all basic um, shapes. Nothing's um, rendered down properly. I mean, we don't have textures or anything like that on things, but it's just basic models. And this helps me save a lot of money because I don't need to, you know, go buying wood or hinges or anything or... Um, cabinet doors or whatever you know but, you know things that cost a lot of money basically because um, I can work it all out you know beforehand so what I typically do is I go on a site look for things like a sink and check out what the size is then I can add it I can kind of roughly model the shape and size of that item um, you know cabinet doors and things which I've got here bench tops um, glass splashback tiles and things like that and I can work out how that's actually going to work in my van and whether it's actually going to look good or work well um, before I actually even pick up any tools or buy any wood or do anything of anything really um, and that's what I've been doing here so um, that little grey box that you can see underneath that sink unit there that's that was going to be the size of the original fridge that I was thinking of buying which was going to be a slightly smaller single fridge uh, of course I've gone with dual zone now so this whole cabinet design is going to completely get chucked out the window and I'll start again but that's that's the beauty of this is that um, I could spend a few hours in here and do this um, and look at all the dimensions look at everything figure out um, you know whether 
whether the thing's actually going to work in relation to the inside of the van, how it's going to look basically uh, in relation to the van, um, and change the design. Um, you know, well, it's not really easy, but it's it's certainly easier than making a cabinet and finding out that it's wrong. So that's basically what I've been doing. And I can switch between the different views. I can um, change the elevation views. Um, you know, this is not CAD or anything like that. So guys who work with CAD, I guess it's, you know, they're familiar with that. But I'm, I'm from a multimedia background and a web background. So this is the kind of stuff that I know how to work with. So... Um, yeah, and you can, you know, I can put everything on different layers so I can turn items on and off. So I could turn on the front of the back of the cabinets on and off. I could turn the bench top on and off. I could turn something else on or off and, and, um, and, 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 and look at it, look at the items, you know, individually. And then, and then, and then what I can do is I can also work out how much wood I'm going to need from the plant. So I could say, okay, well, I need, you know, um, a piece of wood 90 by 40 by whatever it is and how many bits am I going to need and how many meters am I going to need of that and then I go and buy and typically what happens is um, because I do things this way is I end up saving myself quite a few dollars because I'm not wasting money um, in an area where you know where I'm where I'm basically buying materials that I don't need um, so you know like at the moment with my flooring and stuff I kind of have got I think I've got two sheets left over it and those two sheets I'll just use them somewhere else I'll use them for a trim or something else so nothing will be wasted everything will be utilized um, and the other thing I'm going to try and do with this build as much as I can is obviously just utilize second hand things with some things like the fridge it wasn't worth doing because the difference in price between a new one and a second hand one is not that much but um, but there are certain certain things that I will do and I'm constantly on Facebook Marketplace and on eBay and Gumtree and those kind of places looking for things that might suit what I'm doing. Um, certainly wood, because um, wood's expensive, you know, especially finished wood. So if I can, um, you know, find a cabinet, re reuse, then I'm going to do that for sure. Anyway, that's where I'm at today. Um, and I'm going to continue to record the build as I go now. And we can uh, make another video again soon. Hope you guys enjoyed.